praxis. And in this video, we're going to be talking about food. Food is a super important commodity, and in this world that we're moving into right now, it can be kind of difficult to get and relatively expensive. I remember years ago, I used to, uh, what's the word, raid dumpsters to get food. There was a really great organic food co-op, and every time I finished shopping at the co-op, I would pop outside and check out all the wonderful produce that they were throwing away that day. Much of it was as good or better than a lot of the stuff that was in the store. It was a terrible waste. I like to capitalize on that. It was a great way of getting hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands of dollars worth of food. But there's another way of getting free food that has nothing to do with dumpsters, and it is called gardening. We're going to talk about that today because I, I think a lot of people have as sort of their backup sort of SHTF plan. If things ever go crazy off the wall and you can't go to the grocery stores and the only way to get food is to live off the land, they've got gardening plans. So we're going to talk about the reality of some of those gardening plans and I'm going to give you uh, a couple of tips. One, I found an awesome seed company that has exactly the seeds that you would be looking for. I've uh, negotiated with them for 10% off of their already really awesome prices for their seeds. So we're going to be talking about three seed, uh, three seed uh, sets that you can get that will get you off to a really good start if you're interested in gardening. After that, we're going to talk about the holes in those sets because uh, you know any one thing that you get isn't going to solve all of your problems. Uh, the, while these seed kits are really, really awesome, there's a couple things that I see as potential holes in them, and we're going to talk about how you can easily fill those in. Uh, and then after that, we're going to talk about some knowledge that's really important for you to have if you decide to do this. Now, the first thing you need to know if you're going to get into gardening as a way of uh, you know, creating food for yourself or augmenting the food that you're already getting is that the seeds that you want to get are very specific. You can't just go off and get any uh, different types of seeds. You know, if you go to the grocery store, you start pulling seeds out of uh, different fruits and vegetables that you may find there. You know, that's not necessarily going to work for you very well. The type of seeds that you're looking for are non-hybrid heirloom seeds. Now, what is the difference between those two? Well, a hybrid seed is kind of like a hybrid vehicle. A hybrid vehicle uses gas and it uses electric and it puts them together and makes your car go forward. Uh, I have hybrid vehicles and they work really nice. There are a lot of hybrid seeds that work really nice, but one problem with hybrid seeds, which are created by combining two different plants together, is that the offspring of a lot of hybrid plants are nightmares. So you want to have uh, heirloom seeds. Heirloom seeds are uh, types of seeds that have been naturally developed over uh, generations and they are capable of creating offspring that have the same characteristics as the parents. So that's a really important consideration. And this uh, company that I have contacted, uh, that I've got links to down below, they're called, uh, I've got a, their name right on the package here, Survival Garden Seeds. Uh, by the way, you're going to want to, don't Google search their name because there's a lot of competition out there. You, there are lots of different companies that might pop up ahead of these guys and those other companies might be perfectly fine. I don't know, they might be awful companies. I know these guys are great, so if you wanna uh, hook up with these guys because they got really great prices and they have all heirloom seeds, there's a link down in the description below. You can go through that. And if you go through that link and you use the uh, discount code Praxis Prepper, you can get 10% uh, off all three of these sets that I'm gonna talk about. Now this is the first set right here. Uh, this is called the Home Garden Set. There are 30 different heirloom seeds in here, and it's a lot of fruits and vegetables. It's a really great packet for uh, people who are, you know, maybe just going to start out into gardening. It's got a really nice uh, uh, mixture, uh, 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 or variety is the word I'm looking for, of, of different types of crops in there. I'm not going to list off 30 different things because your eyes would just glaze over, and honestly, I don't remember all of them. But I looked through, and it's a really nice selection. Now, there are a few things that are missing out of... Uh, this packet. If, uh, you know, shit it's a fan, it's a nuclear holocaust, you emerge out of your bunker, you know, a couple years later, and you just go to put uh, the seeds in this packet in the ground, uh, it's going to be beautiful, and you're going to get a lot of, uh, you know, these beautiful colors, and it's going to be delicious, but you're going to be missing a couple things uh, out of here. One, uh, there aren't, uh, there's nothing like uh, onions or allium type plants. Garlics, onions, chives, things of that nature. I think those are an important thing for anyone's garden because uh, uh, they have a lot of uh, nutrients in them, but they also have uh, antimicrobial and other sorts of uh, immune system, uh, system health benefits. Uh, so this pack doesn't have any onions, chives, or anything along those lines. 
So really cool pack, but missing those things. Another thing this pack is missing is calories. Uh, you've got the fruits and the vegetables, but you don't have any grains and there aren't any potatoes or anything. I mean, you can see there's no potatoes thrown in, into a pack like this. So if you were going to get the, uh, this pack, um, and I, I think it works, you know, I'm not going to quote prices because prices uh, change, uh, you know, all the time. <laughs> That's, I mean, it's like it takes 24 hours for me to finish this video. The price has probably already doubled since then. Uh, but at the time of this recording, the seeds in this packet are about one third of the price of other seed, uh, other kind of competing seed packets that I'm, I'm looking at. So really, really great value for what you're getting. Uh, but if you get this packet, you're going to potentially want to add some allium types of things, chives. Uh, I like chives as a, uh, an allium as opposed to onions or uh, garlic because chives are a perennial and they just kind of keep shooting you out greens constantly. It's really easy and just all summer you can just kind of keep picking more of them. Onions are great also, but they don't kind of have that benefit. Garlic is great also, but they don't have that benefit. Uh, chives are one of my favorite things because you plant them once and then, then you're done with it. So really great seed packet, but it's missing a couple of those things. And uh, like I was saying, calories. Uh, it's, you know, the fruits and the vegetables, the colors, the nutrition, uh, but you're not getting, um, you know, potatoes or corn or wheat or any of that kind of thing. So if you buy this, you might want to think about getting separately corn, wheat, potatoes, something like that. I'm a big fan of potatoes because they grow really easily. Corn's also a nice one. Wheat, I've never really experimented with it and it, you know, kind of just it, it's a little bit labor intensive uh, doing wheat, so I, I tend to prefer the potatoes and the, uh, the corn. So the Home Gardener seed packet, this is kind of the smallest one, 30 different seeds uh, packets in there, uh, and you can check in the description below for the link to it and, uh, you know, to get the current pricing on this, uh, this stuff. Okay, the next one, the uh, next step up we have is the Homestead pack, and this one, I don't know, they didn't... So it doesn't have quite the, be the same beautiful uh, graphic design on here. Uh, but it's got everything that you got going on in the home garden pack, but you got a couple of extra things in this one. This one has 50 seed uh, varieties, 50 different seed varieties in there. And there's all different types of things. And just like the other one, I'm not going to go into specifics. Uh, but it does have a couple of additions over the home garden pack. Now, this one ha uh, does have some onions in there, and I think that's great that you have that uh, as a... You know, only go to because you know because of those nutritional uh, elements and everything, and it does have some corn in here. And finally, that means you're getting some calories in a pack like this because you know you got your your cucumbers and you've got your beans and your uh, oh, what else is in here? There's like all types of tomato, squash, all that kind of stuff. Really great for nutrition. Nutrition is super important, but calories are really important too. So you've got the corn in here. In fact, I think if you were going to get this, you'd probably want to buy extra corn because they only gave you one seed packet of corn in here. I think you would want more than that. Now, uh, if you were to use this once and then the next season, you would be able to, you know, obviously collect the seeds because these are all heirloom seeds. You could collect the seeds. You'd have many more uh, uh, corn seeds for your next season. But if you want to be right out of the gate, actually having a decent harvest, I would suggest maybe getting this and grab yourself some extra corn seeds. Uh, the next step up, and this is, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a monster. It's an abomination in a good way, in all the right ways. Uh, this is called the Farmer's Seed Vault. Now, this has a hundred different seed varieties in it. And there's just, it's, there's so much different stuff in here. And again, the value, uh, price per packet in here, it's like a third to a fifth of the price that, I've, that I see of seeds, uh, you know, at other stores. Really, really great value. This has the, uh, all the fruits and vegetables that are in the other ones. It has the onions. Uh, I think it had a couple different varieties of onions. It has a couple different varieties of corn in here. Uh, and uh, it doesn't have any wheat and it doesn't have any potatoes in there. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that uh, the, the idea for these things, uh, you'll notice that these are in Mylar bags here. The idea for these is that you can set them aside. You can put them in a refrigerator. You can put them in a freezer. You want to keep them at a stand, uh, a static temperature. You want to keep them cool. You want to keep them dry. You want to keep them in the dark. And if you keep them like that, they're going to last many, many years. Now you can't do that with potatoes. Potatoes just don't fly for uh, you know being saved for years and years and years. Now you can collect potato seeds uh, and. Uh, and you know you can grow potatoes from them, but there's a couple problems if you uh, collect potato seeds, and this is why potatoes are generally grown from the tubers of last year's potatoes. And the reason is uh, potatoes are kind of like apples. 
and it sounds like I'm gonna make like some kind of like uh, you know life uh, lesson metaphor or something. It's like potatoes are like apples. They blah blah, blah and then, you know there's some kind of clever thing. No, it's not. But potatoes are, are like apples in so far that in the same way that you have a Granny Smith tree or you have a Honeycrisp tree or a Golden Delicious tree, if you were to collect the seeds from any of those trees and then planted them, you're not gonna get a Granny Smith tree or a Delicious tree or a Fuji tree or whatever the uh, the variety of the seed is that you collected. Uh, apples are like individuals, like I am Praxis, you are whatever your name is. We are both humans, uh, but if we have a child, uh, we don't, like my child isn't a clone copy of me, another Praxis, your, Praxis, your clone, uh, your child isn't a clone copy of you, it's another human, but it's not the same thing. So the apple varieties are like those individuals, uh, and you know, uh, Praxis is a variety of apple, and your name is a variety of apple. And, uh, you know, if you just collect the seeds, it doesn't create the same, uh, the same variety. So the way that apples are propagated is through grafting, clipping, uh, you know, the uh, sections off of the apple tree. And uh, that's how they uh, make those going forward. Potatoes are the same way. If you collect seeds from a potato plant and plant them, they're not necessarily going to be anything like the, uh, the parent plant. Uh, so the way that we uh, propagate potatoes to keep the, you know, the nice qualities of whatever we've kind of cultivated is that we take the tubers from last year and we plant those and you just can't take tubers and throw them in a freezer and expect them to grow. Uh, so that's the reason that potatoes aren't thrown in here. Um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why they didn't go with wheat in here. I think wheat would probably have been a good benefit, but they do have a lot of corn in there. Um, so closing off this section, if you want to get yourself set up for seeds, for this coming uh, year or years ahead. These are really, really great value. Link down in the description below. If you follow through that link and use the discount code Praxis Prepper, they're gonna give you 10% off what I uh, feel are really, really good prices. I don't really honestly know how they're making their prices as low as they are because these are all heirloom seeds. They are all high quality. Uh, the germination rates are really good and I don't honestly know. Maybe there's some skeletons in their closet. and <laughs> I'm just kidding about that. I have no idea how they keep the price as low as they do. Uh, probably because they're selling them as kits and you're getting kind of a volume discount. But if you're interested in having a big garden and living off of it, you know, you're going to want to get the kit anyway. So let's say you go for one of those kits and let's say you use the uh, coupon code Praxis Prepper and you get t yourself 10% off. You're all happy and you've got these kits. What do you want to add to those? I, well, I've already allu alluded to it a little bit. One great thing is potatoes. These are some potatoes that I just grabbed from the grocery store. Uh, these are organic potatoes and the reason I'm going with organic potatoes as my seed potatoes for next year is because uh, inorganic potatoes can potentially and oftentimes do have growth inhibitors sprayed on them so that they don't start developing eyes and buds uh, while they're just kind of sitting. I mean it's kind of a benefit because if you buy a bunch of potatoes you don't want them to start sprouting if you are planning on eating them. Uh, the downside of the toxic sprays is, uh, well <laughs> I don't I just presume they're toxic. It's like everything people put on stuff is toxic all the time. It, and that's one of the other problems with them is it's like who the heck knows what that stuff is. It's uh, a spray that's put on something to try to inhibit its life processes. It just, it seems like the kind of thing maybe you don't want in your body. Uh, but uh, one benefit of the organic is that they're not sprayed with that kind of stuff. And because of that, it means that they will bud, they will start sending out eyes, and you will be able to grow these for next year. So if you want to just grab yourself some potatoes, put them in a cool, dark place, and you can save those along with your seed packets. But you're going to have to use those potatoes year after year because they, they, don't, they don't survive very long. We're going to talk a little bit later about the best ways to store potatoes because uh, different environments can make them last much longer than others. Uh, but before that, I want to talk about a couple other things you might consider. One of them is corn. Uh, this is corn from a, a different company that I go through a lot. Well, I, it's Fedco Seeds. Uh, I, I'm a fan of Fedco Seeds. I get a lot of stuff through them. They're not the cheapest place in the world. Uh, you know, if you're going to be buying uh, like a lot of different varieties, I would definitely recommend these guys for getting a bunch of different varieties. But if you want to just get a couple specific things, Fedco Seeds is a great place to go. Uh, and uh, this is one pound of yellow corn. I, I've also got uh, a corn for grinding that I can grow. And I also have some uh, uh, wheat. Uh, for creating flour from Fedco. So if you get one of these seed packet, uh, these seed kits that is primarily vegetables, you might want to add either potatoes or corn or wheat or possibly all three of those. I think variety is good for people's uh, health and nutrition and it's also good, you know, what if you have a 
what if you put all your eggs in one basket and you're like, you know, potatoes are the way to go and I'm just going to do potatoes. Well, I'm Irish and as an Irish person, we know a little bit about depending too heavily on potatoes. Sometimes it doesn't work out that great. So it's always good to have lots of different varieties. By the way, I know the history of the potato famine. It wasn't all their fault. They were sort of forced to only grow potatoes. There's a whole back history to that. Thanks, United Kingdom, for that, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you are not being uh, stepped upon by a tyrant uh, you know, on an island next to you, and you do have the freedom to grow whatever you want, it's a good idea to have some variety there so that you can uh, you know, weather if there is a potato uh, uh, pestilence going around, or there is a wheat pestilence going around, or a uh, you know, corn pestilence going around. So if you have that variety, uh, it's going to protect you from those types of things. Var variety is just a wonderful approach to everything including uh, yeah, doing gardening. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, you've got your seeds, you've got your grains, they're all ready to go. You know, where do you go from there? Well, the next thing you want to do is have some good gardening books. Now, I always use this gardening book in all of my videos, not because it's presently available, not because you can get this gardening book. I love this gardening book. I've had it uh, for, you know, a majority of my life. Uh, this is my inheritance from my grandfather, so it kind of has some special sentimental value to me. Uh, you don't need this Crockett Victor garden book but a gardening book that just kind of goes through uh, you know lots of different varieties I'm gonna put a link down in the description below to another gardening book that I think is a, a really nice one I just always like to show this one off again for the sentimental reasons uh, but uh, get yourself some kind of a broad gardening book that is going to give you information on um, when to plant different seeds, you know, when you plant them, in, you know, to start your seedlings, when you transplant those seedlings into the garden, how far apart you should space all these things. Get a general gardening book that's going to give you all that information, as well as, you know, when you can expect to, uh, you know, bear your crops. Uh, of course, that's going to depend on, you know, what growing zone you're in. A lot of that is kind of dependent on, you know, your uh, little micro bubble of uh, climate that you're in, wherever you're at. Uh, but get some kind of guidance so that, you know, if you have a new crop that you're not familiar with you have some sense of how to deal with that uh, on that topic I should mention that uh, with the survival garden seeds they do have information on the back of each packet uh, which is really helpful and it goes into different things about how to plant them and also about how to do some of the seed saving now one thing that I did notice was missing on some of the seed saving uh, information on their uh, packets was uh, for example things like squash uh, if you have pumpkins that's a squash if you have uh, Spaghetti squash, that's a squash. If you have butternut squash, that's a squash. If you have an acorn squash, that's a squash. Well, if you take any of these different squash and you plant them near each other, and by near, by some estimates, I mean within a mile of each other, bees are coming around, they're pollinating one thing, they get the pollen all over them, and then they go to the next plant. And if you're getting pumpkin pollen over on your butternut squash, it's going to be that situation that we talked about, about the, you know, the person going back in time and having sex with themselves and having a kid and then like that kid's going to be a nightmare. You can have that kind of an issue because you would be effectively hybridizing the, pump, uh, the pumpkin with the uh, butternut squash or whatever different squash. Even a cucumber can cross-pollinate with these things. So uh, that, that is one bit of information that they didn't really have uh, included too much uh, on the backs of these packets of seeds. And, you know, I can't really fault them for it because there's so much to know about it. And, you, you know, the, the print would have to be so fine on the back of the thing that you just, you know, you couldn't fit all of it in there. But fortunately, there are solutions to that such as books. This one is called Seed to Seed. In this book, I would highly recommend it. You can buy this book. There's a link in the description below. And this book, Seed to Seed, uh, Seed is all about how to carry your seeds from one generation through the summer, through the winter, into the next generation. Super, super critical book. If you have no other books other than this one, I would say you're doing something right. Because if you can't uh, collect your seeds and then you know bring them into the next season you know what's the point you know the garden just it, it made it so you survive one year only to start the next get a book like this get this book this specific book is a really great book and this talks about all those types of things about you know you know you can't have this planted next to this and if you do there's a solution there's actually a way of planting the two things near each other you could plant a pumpkin right next to a, a butternut squash and if you follow the procedures in this book you could actually make that work i'm not going to go into the details of that get yourself some information it's not all about oomph and just wanting to do something you need to have the knowledge up in your head as well okay after that You've had your garden, you've saved 10% on your survival garden seeds. Uh, it's flourished, it's come up beautifully. You've got you know, all new potatoes for the next season. 
you know, what are you going to do with that? You aren't going to just have a giant Thanksgiving feast and eat everything and then there's nothing left. Uh, you know, we here on this channel as preppers, we are the ants, not the grasshoppers. And uh, did you get that reference? Probably. Uh, you're going to want to know how to save this stuff. This book is about root cellaring. Uh, root cellaring is a way of storing crops from year to year, and there's different ways of doing it. I literally, here at the New Homestead, built a root cellar. Uh, so we have a place where we can store things. Uh, a root cellar is just a cool, dark place where you can store crops. Now, different crops have different requirements. Uh, potatoes, for example, like to be pretty cool, uh, you know, maybe around 36, 38 degrees or so, and they like it to be really humid. They like 90% humidity. Something like onions, let's say you get one of these uh, seed uh, pack kits where you can grow onions and you want to store those onions into the winter. Uh, onions, they like it cool, they like it dark, but they don't like it particularly moist, they like it more dry. So having a book that can inform you about how to store things, I think is a really critical way to kind of, uh, you know, keep your food uh, through the winter into the next season. Incidentally, on that topic, some of my favorite plants because of the storage issue are potatoes. Potatoes last a good four to six months, uh, you know, with, with pretty easy storage uh, uh, situations. Uh, other things that last really well are a lot of squashes. And I, I mentioned butternut squash earlier. Butternut squash, I've, I've been uh, experimenting with it in my root cellar, and I find that uh, butternut squash is one of the better uh, lasting uh, varieties of squash. I've tried acorn squash, and yeah, I've tried spaghetti squash, yeah, but butternut squash seems to like it lasts pretty well. And if you do start getting a little bit of mold spots on it, you can identify that. You just bring it in the house, kind of scrape the mold so spots off, run it under some water with a little brush. It kind of brushes off the stuff that started to get soft, and then you can like eat that one right away. But uh, there's a lot of pumpkins that last really well, and a lot of uh, different butternut squashes last uh, very well. And incidentally, I should mention uh, that I, as I was going through these, I did notice butternut squashes in there. It's one of my favorite squash, be both because it lasts uh, deep into the winter and also uh, it's, it's pretty delicious. It, you don't have to do much to it to make it uh, you know, a delicious meal into itself. What I usually do with butternut squash is I just bake it with a little bit of sugar sprinkled on the surface and, that, and that, that, that's it. Once, it. once it comes out of the oven, the sugar's kind of uh, melted in a little. I poke it a bit with a fork, put a, maybe a little bit of butter on top and it, it's a really nutritious uh, add-on to a meal that doesn't uh, take a lot of work to put together. Like, with a pumpkin, you know, you can uh, you can save a pumpkin, but you know, you're not you don't generally just kind of like eat pumpkin. You want to make something out of the pumpkin. Butternut squash, I find, is really delicious on its own. So I think it's my new favorite squash. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about uh, is uh, let's say you know all the gardening and all the seed saving and all the you know uh, you know uh, vegetable saving after the fact. Let's say it all fails, or let's say you know it doesn't fail, but you know. It's hard to grow all the food that you actually need for yourself. This is an excellent way to subsidize whatever you might be growing in your garden. There's a book about wild edible plants. This is my favorite book on wild edible plants. This is all about North American species. I love this book because it unlocks nature's garden around us. There are lots of plants that are difficult to grow. There are lots of plants that are easier to grow. This is about weeds. Weeds grow really easily without any intervention on your part. All you need to do is walk around and know where to look and know what to look for, and you get all this free food. Now, a lot of things in these guys, like I said, they're, they're fruits, they're vegetables, they're greens, they're that kind of stuff. There's a lot of nutrients, there's a lot of vitamins in there, uh, which might be interchangeable. The nutrients and vitamins might be the same thing. I don't know definitionally whether that's true or not. But a lot of wild edible plants have a lot of those, uh, those nutrients in them anyway. Anyway, a lot of them, it's, it's wild greens, you got some berries in there. Uh, but you can get an awful lot of nutrition, not necessarily calories. You're going to be wanting to, you know, make sure you focus on the potatoes and the... Uh, uh, the wheat and the, the corn and things like that for calories. But in terms of nutrition, you can get an awful lot of nutrition from wild edible plants. So I would highly recommend as a way of subsidizing your, subsidizing your garden to get a book of, uh, on wild edible plants. And I'll tell you that there's a awesome bonus. Once you learn about certain wild edible plants, when you're out in your garden and you're weeding, you're gonna notice something. An awful lot of weeds, perhaps even most weeds, they're edible. In fact, the last garden that I had at my last homestead, the most prolific plants, my, my best growers in the garden, the thing that I pulled out most to get the most nutrients out of 
was weeds. So having a book where you can learn about all these things uh, so you can actually utilize them because I know a lot of people, the weed and the, you know, it's just, it's a chore. You're kind of going through and it's, you know, it's back breaking. You don't really get anything out of it other than clearing out the garden. You know, when I weed, I'm eating <laughs> the whole time. I'm taking fresh stuff. It's still living in my hand. I'm eating the top off. Maybe I'll store some of it, uh, you know, but mostly it's just it's kind of going in my mouth as I go. And wild edible plants are a great, great way of subsidizing whatever you have growing in your garden. And it just if you have uh, fields around you, you can go into those fields and you can get lots of free food. All right, so just to recap, we have three different uh, seed kits from uh, Survival Garden Seeds. Again, use the link below to get to them. I don't, uh, by the way, uh, just referring to there being a link below, I don't get any kickback or, or back end or anything from these things. Uh, I, I guess I could have negotiated for that with them. I didn't bother with that. I just mostly negotiated to get you guys 10% off. Um, but make sure you go through that link below because it's kind of hard to, I tried Googling it uh, earlier today when I wanted to just remind myself of what was in these packets and it was awfully hard to get to their website. So use the link below, Praxis Prepper, uh, all caps and no space between the two words is your 10% off code. And you can get 10% off on the Home Garden Kit, on the Homesteader Kit, uh, Home Gardener being 30 seeds, Homesteader being 50 seeds, or on the Farmer's Seed Vault, which was 100 different seed varieties. If I were gonna make a recommendation to you, this one's really, uh, this was really crazy uh, to get, and it was just, it was a lot of fun to look, look through. Um, for my own purposes, I think that this would be overkill. You would need so much space to take advantage of this many seeds. For me personally, in my particular situation, I think that I would not necessarily go for this. Uh, that said, it's a really great value and it's not like you have to grow all the seeds the first year. You can grow some of the seeds, you know, the first year and then you can, you know, try some other ones later on. You can kind of see which ones uh, work for your your local environment. And that's a big thing too. It's like not every seed is going to grow the, uh, the same in different places. You need to know your zone. Uh, the uh, the zone map uh, talks about different growing conditions, you know, uh, uh, up in the northern part of the country, it's different down in the southern part of the United States. Um, so, you know, there may be some seeds in here that work better for your area or not as good for your area. So I'm actually selling myself on this a little bit in that, you know, if you get this, it gives you that kind of uh, variability and who knows what the growing conditions are going to be in the future. You know, uh, if we have, uh, you know, the, the situation of nuclear winter, and there's a lot of particulates in the air or a volcano erupts and there's a lot of particulates in the air, the temperature could go down. You don't get as much sunlight and maybe certain things in this packet would work better in your area. If the reverse happens and global warming and climate change kind of continue doing their thing and the temperatures go up, there'll be different seeds that might do better. So in that way, having something like this gives you more options, gives you more flexibility. But if you're not worried about that, and as a prepper you probably are, but if you're not worried about that, I would recommend uh, this homesteader mix here. This is the 50 seed packet. Uh, it's still a really good value. Uh, you, know, you know, this one is probably you know the best value of all of them. It's still a really good value with this. You do get the uh, the onions, the alliums in there. You do get some corn in there. I think this one would be a pretty good uh, way to go. Uh, the homesteader pack, and then you have the simple home garden 30 heirloom uh, variety pack. If you do get this, again, I would highly recommend get some kind of a uh, a calorie rich food, you know, your wheat, your corn, your potatoes, and honestly add them to any of these packs. It's so easy and cheap to buy some potatoes at the grocery store and you can go, uh, you know, pretty much anywhere and you can get some corn seeds or some wheat seeds. So you just kind of have that in your back pocket. So I hope you found this video helpful. The most important thing that I would suggest to you is to just start trying this stuff out. Even if you don't plan on surviving on, uh, you know, your garden seeds this year, you know, start planting a garden because so much of it is experience, so much of it is, you know, uh, having that kind of trial and error relationship with it. So, you know, maybe you buy, you know, one of these to use this year, you buy one of them to put in your freezer so that it's stored for the future. You know, that would be a good way of going about it. But whatever you do, start practicing this year because, you know, books are great. They have lots of knowledge and information in them, but you know, the last thing you need during an emergency situation is to have absolutely zero knowledge up here and you're hastily flipping through books, having no idea what you really need to be doing uh, you know, while all the other crazy stuff is going on. You wanna have some experience in your back pocket. So start doing at least something this year. Having a garden this year that absolutely fails 
is so much better than not having done a garden at all because at least you get that experience. And at these prices, especially with 10% off, you don't really have that much to lose. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.